Hello and welcome to, well, welcome to um, an interstellar, yes, it's an interstellar Debbie's Dots, that's what it is. And, well, for those of you that don't know what a Debbie's Dots is, Debbie's Dots is me joining dots, or me seeing dots that maybe you haven't, or that haven't been brought to your attention. And so, today I want to talk about 3 Eye Atlas because... Okay, folks, it's a bit of a guilty pleasure. I do love all things space, so I do keep my eyes on what goes on in space. Many of you will probably be saying, well, what is space? What's it all about? Does space exist? It's so many questions. But I have been watching the interstellar object, 3 Eye Atlas. Did you know about it? You probably have heard about it but probably don't understand what the significance is. So let me just show you first that here we've got a slide from the European Space Agency that says that a lot of people are observing 3 i Atlas going past Mars. Now the question is, is why, why are these space agencies and NASA and the Chinese Space Agency, why are they all interested in a comet? Is it a comet? Maybe it's not a comet. What is 3 I Atlas? And where does the word come from? Right, so interstellar, it's an interstellar object. That means it's come from another solar system. We've only had, this is the third one, that's why it's called 3. And the I stands for interstellar. And the Atlas, that stands for the telescope that discovered it back in August. So we didn't know that this thing existed. And they found it in August and ever since then, well, let's just say it's got a lot of anomalies. It's not acting or looking like a comet. Nothing seems to be, well, nothing seems to be predictable with this object from another solar system. So everybody's watching it with a lot of interest. And I want to draw your attention here to the New York Post who say, could the mysterious Manhattan-sized comet be a black swan event? The implications are so huge for humanity. Now, this is a Harvard scientist, Avi Loeb, who is very, very well regarded and has really kind of put his neck out quite a lot and saying, well, is this a natural object? And this is the size of Manhattan, folks, so it's, it's not small, you know, it's big. And like I say, there's a lot of anomalies. We'll go into the anomalies and the theories of what it may or may not be in a minute. But I just want to draw your attention to this article because Avi Loeb is saying that it could weigh 33 billion tonnes, according to the James Webb Telescope, right? And a comet normally has a long tail. This doesn't seem to have a tail. It also has a lot of anomalies like, well, it's been radiating light. Really, you say? Yeah, it's been radiating light. And it seems to have been going against gravity in direction as well. And the speed with which it goes, it's meant to go, say, from the um, east coast of the USA to the west coast. It could travel that distance in one minute. It's going that fast. So what is 3i Atlas? And also, I'd say, you know, I mean, we'll come into whether it could be a black swan event or maybe it's Project Bluebeam. But what interests me is why is everyone so quiet about it? Unless you go looking for information on 3i Atlas, it's not going to be main headlines BBC, main headlines Sky. You're not going to see it probably even on GB News. Apologies to any of you broadcasters out there that have actually covered a little bit of it, but it's not on your front pages. It's not on your radars, but it's on mine. And at the moment, the sun is behaving very badly, very badly indeed, throwing out lots of solar flares and lots of what they call coronal, corona, oh, that word again, coronal mass ejections. So there's a lot going on with the sun and huge sunspots. So 3i Atlas is of great interest to amateur YouTubers as well, as we're going to come to see, because I have to throw out a shout out, because I did tell you it was a guilty pleasure. So I'm a great avid follower of Dobsonian Power, and he's got a huge following now, Tiago, and I'm sure he'll probably never see this little video. But I'm an explorer, Tiago, bam! And I love what you do with all of your work, because Tiago has telescopes in his back garden, right? 
and he's so authentic. Trust me, he's an amazing guy. He's in Portugal and he goes out to his telescopes. You can see him and he's recalibrating the telescopes and it's absolutely fascinating. And he's been searching for comets, the Swan Comet. To those of you that do know about 3i Atlas, you'll know there's a lot of comets going around at the moment and a lot of talk about what those comets are. But he goes out and he focuses on the comets and what's going on in space. And he comes back and he searches, right? He searches. And it was he that found a really amazing picture of 3i Atlas. Now, the thing is, 3i Atlas, it came onto our attention in August. And since then, it well, it, it's kind of done a flyby on Mars. And you'd think, wouldn't you, because we've got probes and all sorts of stuff going on on Mars, that we'd get a really good picture of it, right? Yeah, I'd have thought so too. Wrong, everybody. NASA seemed to have conveniently, well, because of the government shutdown, you know, the United States government shutdown, they conveniently switched off all their data and the, even the Chinese Space Agency went very quiet on it. In fact, everybody's gone very quiet on, well, where are the pictures of 3i Atlas as it went past Mars? Because we'll get a good view. Nothing. So after Mars, it's meant to go behind the sun. So we lose, we, we lose contact with it, basically. We don't know what happens to it. But what we do know is that since it's going behind the sun now, as we're recording, as it's going behind the sun, it's going to emerge like where? Nobody quite knows, but the sun has been throwing out a lot of coronal mass ejections and solar flares straight at 3i Atlas. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens as it reaches perihelium. What is perihelium, you ask yourselves? Well, perihelium is when 3i Atlas will get as close to the sun as it possibly can. So at the moment it's behind the sun. So we can't get any data on it, we can't get any pictures. But Tiago from Dobsonian Power, he decided, and I was watching live, so I'm very honored to have watched live, but he was using his solar telescope. And with his solar telescope, he produced some amazing pictures. And since then there's been a flurry of pictures. So here's a couple of pictures of what you're seeing with 3i Atlas. Now it might look on one of those pictures as though it has a tail, but it doesn't actually, because if you see the picture on the right hand side, as Tiago describes it, it's a poof, like a poof of gas, and it seems to have a nucleus. But when you see his pictures with that in combination, you can see that perhaps it maybe has an entrance, it's circular, and it seems to be emitting light. And, you know, for those of you that aren't aware of 3i Atlas, do go and look at Tiago and Dobsonian Power, but also Stefan Burns, who's a geophysicist, amazing. He's done some great work on 3i Atlas. Angry Astronaut as well on YouTube and Ben Davidson, Space Weatherman too. You know, go and have a look at these people because they're putting out some great information about what is going on in space. And we'll come to that in a minute because space is pretty relevant. But let's look at the hypothesis on what on earth is going on? What is 3i Atlas? So I'll bring to your attention this article in IFL Science, which is entitled Alien Mothership, Hypothesis About to Have a Key Test as Interstellar Object 3i Atlas Hits Solar Conjunction and Perihelion. Now this is gonna take place in two days time on October the 29th. So it's a crucial time. But you have to ask yourself, what is 3i Atlas? And there's been loads and loads of hypothesis. Is it an alien mothership? Is it a fleet of alien ships? Is it the Anunnaki coming back? Are there gods on board a mothership that's coming back to save Earth? Is it just a piece of rock? Is it a probe? Is it a piece of space junk? Is it a ghost ship? What is 3i Atlas? What's in it? What's it comprised of? Because the other anomaly you know is that it has no nickel or is it lead? I keep forgetting, but there's an anomaly with the metals. But please go and look at information on 3i Atlas because it's certainly not behaving or looking like a comet. And, you know, we've seen a lot of films, right, of space and what happens when spaceships are ghosted and don't have anybody in them. and you know, where are we going? Are we going science fiction? Are we going science fact? I don't know. 
I don't know any more than anybody else what 3i Atlas is. But what I do know is that something's not quite right. Could it be Project Bluebeam? I don't know. Maybe. There's been a lot of sightings of UFOs, but nobody seems to be able to explain them, and NASA seemed to have shut down. And did you know, actually, that apparently no sitting president has ever publicly visited Area 51? I'm just saying. I'm just throwing it out there. But a 3 eye atlas is very important and this article in the Daily Mail will show you why. So it says here that NASA have quietly deployed planetary defence tools after interstellar visitor shows odd light behaviour. You see, even they're warning about it. And just to prove a point, I trawled, because you do have to look, this document that NASA produced, they've hidden on their website, so I did have to hunt for it. But here it is, if you want to freeze the screen and zoom in, you can see when it was issued and what they were saying, and that basically, they're still calling it a comet, but many other very eminent scientists and geophysicists are saying they don't believe that it is. And hopefully, one day, soon, we'll know. And this is why we're putting out this Debbie's Dots now, because this next few weeks are going to be very important because we don't know what is going to happen as 3i Atlas hits perihelion and emerges. Because once it emerges, it's coming closer to Earth. So it's like doing a flyby, right? So this slide here, Live Science Plus, interstellar object 3i Atlas is about to get very active this week. And it's talking about the perihelion, so a lot going on. But you can see how it sort of came in, flew past Mars, flew past Sun, or is flying past the sun and is now going to fly towards or a little bit closer to Earth and then on to Jupiter. So, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's collecting data. You know what? Data? That would go good in the data library in the UK, wouldn't it? Remember that because I covered that on 7-7s, Seven remember? So, space, a lot going on in space. And I just want to finish on a couple more slides. And this one really... <laughs> I mean, from the Metro, does the Earth now actually have two moons? What a clickbait headline that is, because actually they're calling it a second moon. But actually, we do seem to have a little asteroid, a little asteroid that's called 2025 PN7 that seems to be just accompanying us. They call it a ballet, in a ballet with Earth. So if you see two moons in the sky, perhaps you're looking at asteroid 2025 pn7 i'm not sure but space to me is a very interesting subject and i'm sure for you, many of you it is too and it's not just us that are interested in space so i just want to end and remind everybody that when president trump was in his previous office he ended the office by signing with the stroke of a pen here in this article, it says, he declared Space Force a reality. Very interested in space, as is King Charles. So remember everybody, I've done a lot of work on King Charles and you can see that on UK column, The Green King. And one episode in particular, as I remember, I talked about Astra Carta. And here we have King Charles's seal the Sustainable Markets Initiative. Well, what a surprise. But the race is on for space. And King Charles seems to think that he owns it. What do you think? Comments will be very interesting, I'm sure, on this Debbie's Dots, because everyone's going to have a different opinion. Everyone's going to have a different view. And some of you might just say, actually, you know what, Debbie? It's just a comet. Well, let's see, eh? proof is in the pudding but thank you for watching thank you for listening if you like please share and I'm told to tell everyone to hit the subscribe button and the like button if you like it it really does help the channel and honestly I can't thank I can't thank you enough for watching and for subscribing and just for finding me and don't forget however gloomy or doomy that it gets never forget keep smiling